I think it was about 2001 that my producers came to me and told me about this little boy who had written a book of poetry and there were two people he wanted to meet. He wanted to meet Jimmy Carter and he wanted to meet me. And was there a way, you know, I could make some time to meet him? And so from the first time I met him, I knew that this was a special child. Today I have the privilege and the honor to meet for the first time a remarkable little boy that I wanted to meet from the moment I heard his story. His name is Matty Stepanek. And I hear he's an extraordinary person. He's only 11 years old. I've spoken to him on the phone several times, but today's the first time we're actually meeting in person. First, I want you to take a look at Maddie's story. Maddie Stepanek is an extraordinary 11-year-old living through a difficult storm. He was born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy. You feel it in your muscles. You feel muscle pain. To get around, I need my wheelchair first. I need oxygen tanks. Maddie's mom, Jenny, also has the disease, which she did not discover until after she had had four children. Katie died when she was two years old. Stevie died at six months of age. And Jamie died when he was four years old. Maddie has miraculously just turned 11, which nobody would have ever guessed possible. From a very young age, Maddie was special. Even while tethered to oxygen, he earned a junior black belt in martial arts. Maddie is a very unique spirit. Um, a lot of people would say he's an old soul, he's spiritual, and he's hopeful for something bigger than himself. I have always had three wishes, and they are one, to have my book published so I can spread my message of peace through the world, two, to talk peace with my hero, Jimmy Carter, and get, meet with Oprah Winfrey. Maddie got his first wish, two books of poetry, published in the last four months. And with a phone call, his second wish came true. They picked up the phone and handed it to me. It was Jimmy Carter. It was so exciting. I couldn't believe it. I really think I'm here for a purpose, because in my life, I've had so many close calls to dying, even if it takes me one year or 1,000 years. I have to do what I was meant to do. Well, Maddie's third wish to share his message on the Oprah show is coming through today. Please welcome Maddie Stepanek. Gosh, you're here. You made it here. Thank you so You're everything I imagined. You know, all the producers are running around like you're a big celebrity. <laughs> and the producer of this show, she said, he does not disappoint. He's everything we imagined him to be. Thank you. You, you really are. You, this is your first time flying, coming here too, right? Yes, it was. And what was that like for you? It was amazing for me. Uh, I mean, even especially when we had to go through this huge cloud, uh -huh. we would... I saw a cloud coming, and I figured they would just go around it. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm surrounded by white stuff, and I felt like I was in this fluffy marshmallow. In this fluffy marshmallow. That's it, that's... my mom, however. <laughs> she was a little anxious, right? A little. A little anxious. That's putting it simply. That's putting it simply. Yes. Well, how are you? How is your health? How are you doing? I'm doing a lot better health-wise. I'm doing very well excitement-wise. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard that a lot of grown-ups had tried to get you to let go of the three wishes, but you held on to them. Yeah? Yes. Because? Because they were things that would last forever. Yeah. Going to Disney World ends in a week. Having a shopping spree ends in a day, but being able to talk to Jimmy Carter, being able to have my books published, being able to talk to you here today lasts forever. You are the sweetest boy. It is a sweet privilege. So you've been writing poetry since you were how old? About three. And so you, you started calling it Heart Songs because what? It was the song in my heart. 
It was the message in my heart. A heart song doesn't have to be a song in your heart, even talking about love and peace. It can just be your message. It can be your feelings. There are no words to describe Maddie because from the first time I heard about his story and then met him on the air and became friends with him, and I can honestly say friends with him, the word friend is thrown around all the time, but I became friends with him and spoke with him often and emailed him a lot. I remember talking to him um, from my house in California, and my house in California I've named uh, various various things on my property. First of all, I call my house in California Promised Land, and I named uh, different roads, Glory and Hallelujah, and, and uh, I have a group of trees, 12, 12 oak trees that I call the apostles where I read, and he would always refer to them. And I remember one day he called and he said, did you get to read under the apostles today? And I said, yeah, Maddie, I was reading all afternoon and I fell asleep under the trees. And he said, well, I got to read today too. And now the sun is, sun is setting. He said, the sun is setting and it has oranges and purples in it and I'm sending it your way. I'm sending it your way. He was a love boy. He was a love boy. Maddie called himself a poet and peacemaker, and he was indeed. He looked for the best in everybody, and despite his own painful struggles, he never lost faith. And you still see miracles in your life every day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like getting through another day. I feel very special, and I'm also very happy that I've survived. I'm always careful to see my glass half full. And even though he tackled life's most important questions in his poetry, he was always a little boy at heart. I want people to know my life philosophy, to remember to play after every storm. Maddie Stepanek is trying to avoid a surgery which could be fatal. I promised Maddie I would pray with him and pray for him. And if you believe in the power of prayer, please devote some of yours to Maddie. I was so proud of our viewers when they joined me to pray for Maddie during a crisis, and he had plenty of them. And our prayers were answered. Maddie miraculously healed. I'd like to thank you for listening to my message and helping me live longer so that I can keep sharing my message. Thank you so much. Your prayers are working. <laughs> we hoped, I hoped, that he would continue to defy the odds. But this summer, his tiny body that had been through so much just really couldn't take it anymore. On a Tuesday morning in June, wrapped in the arms of his beloved mom, Jenny, my guy went home to God. There comes along in a lifetime, and certainly in my lifetime, an angel, and you know it. And uh, there's no question that Maddie was an incarnated, in the flesh, human being angel. He was wise beyond his years. He was uh, prophetic and profound. And he was the light. He just was. When I die, I want to be a child in heaven. I want to be a 10-year-old cherub. I want to be a hero in heaven and a peacemaker, just like my goal on earth. It was a hero's burial. The streets of Wheaton, Maryland were lined with Maddie's fans. Over 1,000 admirers, including former President Jimmy Carter, filled the church to celebrate one of the rarest little beings who ever walked the earth. And we have known uh, kings and queens. We've known presidents and prime ministers. But the most extraordinary person whom I have ever known in my life is Maddie Stepanek. I found him to be magical. I could not believe so much wisdom, so much power, so much grace, so much strength and love could come from one 10-year-old little boy. His little coffin, and it's really hard to see a little coffin, was carefully guarded by a brigade of firefighters 
each one a pal of Maddie's. An honor guard stood at attention. Maddie, the peacemaker, was finally at peace. And we all wept, only because we're going to miss him so much. There was no braver soul, nor bigger spirit, in so small and frail a body. Goodbye, my guy.